Hi, I'm Sarita LaRoche, and today we're gonna do a simple flip cup with acrylic tube paint, Floetrol, silicone, and water to achieve a painting that looks similar to this as part of our beginner's tutorial series. Let's get started. Today we're going to be using a 10 by 10 square canvas, just a simple stapled back canvas. Um, sometimes I like to put some tape on the back to protect it from all of the paint drips, uh, but today I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm protecting my surface with this really great silicone mat and I will put a link in the description for this mat. Um, what I love the most, I don't have much paint on here right now, is that the paint just literally will peel off. And um, maybe I will film peeling it off after <laughs> we're done with this pour and stick it in there for you. Um, I'm using some solo cups, little plastic solo cups to hold up my painting so that it can drip down easily. Uh, I prefer to use the plastic ones because they do seem to hold up to the volume of paint that goes over the corners better than the paper ones, and you can reuse them. Some people like to put push pins on the back. That works too to hold it up above your surface. I personally don't just because I have a little one who's often in here working with me, and I just don't want her to have access to that. So we're gonna be using acrylic tube paint I'm using the Artist Loft brand today, which is available at Michael's. That is their store brand, and it's inexpensive, especially when they're having their big sales. <clears throat> to mix the paint today, we are going to put in um, Flood Floetrol. We're gonna be using this as our medium, and also Spot On Treadmill Oil. I will put the links for both of those in the description. Now there's many different things you can use for paint mediums. Um, there's some that are sold ready-made. Some people like to use glue. Um, today we're just gonna stick with the Floetrol and I'll test, test out some of the other paint mediums in another video for you. But what I like to do is I put my Floetrol in a little bottle like this. I add 10% water to the bottle and then fill it with Floetrol. And that just gives me the consistency that I feel is good for a flip cup. Now, this is not gonna be the consistency for every kind of paint technique, um, but this works for what we're gonna do today. So you don't have to be super, super uh, clinical about this. Some people do like to weigh their paints um, I am a little bit more haphazard with my uh, calculations, but you're essentially going to put one part paint to two parts pouring medium, and this is my Floetrol and water. So you can see I've got my paint there. You can kind of see it in the cup, and I'm just gonna fill up about two more times what I had in the cup, okay? So one part paint, two parts Floetrol. And the Floetrol is a milky white and it does lighten the color when you initially mix it. Um, but it does not affect the color when it dries. This can be a little bit deceiving because when you initially do your painting, you're gonna have your colors look a tiny bit lighter and they will darken. And so um, sometimes people, I guess, you know, don't feel so good about that because <laughs> they loved what they painted and it got darker. So just keep that in mind. But what Floetrol does is it just separates the paint molecules from each other so that they don't dry as fast. And it preserves all of the paint binders that are in there. So you're not breaking down the paint as you would if you put too much water. 
because it is a water soluble paint. So um, it's almost like a colorless paint. Don't quote me on that, but you can think of it that way. So I mix it in here and I'm making sure that I scrape the bottom well to get it thoroughly stirred in there. I'm not lifting. I don't wanna lift because that's going to create bubbles. And um, in general, you wanna to avoid too many bubbles. I'm doing this in real time so you can see what I really do when I mix my paints. This is an ocean green. I happen to love this color. Uh, I go through seasons where I love one color over another. Right now I am in an ocean green mood. So let me show you how I prepare my cups. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this spot on treadmill silicone to my paint now that it's mixed. I'm just gonna add three or four drops, that's it. And for myself, I just like to do a couple of stirs and that's it. I don't wanna over mix. The more you mix, the smaller the little molecules of silicone are going to be in the um, paint and then the smaller your cells. Now, if you don't know what cells are, cells are, um, you know, they look like little circles that appear as the paints are mixing. The paints colors are different weights and some will drop down, some will come up. So um, we wanna see that interaction in our flip cup. So there, just a tiny little stir, nothing special. I pre-mixed these other colors. I have the ocean green I was showing you, a dark, which I'm using black, a light, I'm using white, and then I have a metallic. This is a Coral Deco Art metallic. And the reason I'm putting the metallic in there is that metallics will often give you some cell action without silicone. And I'm going to do these same exact colors for you without the silicone. So here we go. I'm gonna put some green, ocean green in my cup. I put about half of it. Then I'm going to put the black about half of it also. Here we go, my white. Whoops, a little bit of paint on the canvas there, which is fine. And I'm gonna put all of my coral right there in the center. There we go. Nice coral color. If you can add a metallic to your mix, um, you're definitely gonna get more interaction just because the paint is a different consistency. And, um, you know, this is chemistry. This is all about paint formulas inter interacting with each other in such a way that it creates shapes and movement that you might not have been able to do easily just painting with a brush lacing and cells and layering and bleeding into each other. It's really fun. So I didn't add any silicone to the coral and that's just because um, the metallic is going to interact on its own. So I have the cup here and because I have a small enough canvas, I can just go ahead and put the canvas here and we're going to flip. Ready? One, two, three. Now I'm going to just leave it there for a moment and we're going to let it mix. Now that the paint has been mixing around inside the cup, we have a couple of options. We can just pick the cup straight up. We can move the cup around. For this particular experiment, I'm just going to lift the cup straight up so you can see what a basic dirty flip cup looks like. And here we go. All right. You can see, even in the cup, all the cell action 
that was happening as the different kinds of paints mixed. And here we have all these different cells that are forming. So I'm really pleased with what I see here, um, but just for, for teaching purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with the torch. Now, um, this is a butane torch. I will put a link for it in the description. And it, when you use a heat source like this, it just helps to encourage cell growth and also um, to pop any bubbles that might be in there, little nasty bubbles. Ooh, so let me turn this off, there we go. So um, I already had a lot of cells in there, so I wasn't really worried about making cells, but I just wanted to show you. So now that the cells have formed, I'm going to stretch them. And I should get some pretty big cells because you can see how big they already are. I'm going to start over here at this corner. And here, I'll turn this way so you can see it. I'm just going to let the paint go off the edge. Sometimes I try to preserve a little bit more, but for this demonstration, let's just let the paint move. I'm gonna bring all the paint back and send it over the other edge. When I'm moving the paint on the canvas, I'm always paying attention to where the weight of the paint is. Where is the bulk of that paint? Because I need to move that. Okay, so now the bulk is here and I'm gonna send it that way. And I'm also gonna pay attention to my cells um, depending on what you want as your final effect. Um, you might want to preserve a more round shape. You want, might want to make them more zigzag. These are the kind of decisions you make as you're moving it around. Um, but for sure, they're gonna get bigger as you stretch the paint. So I got it all the way around here and uh, most of my edges are clear. You can just use the drips to clean up the edges, just like that. Here we go, all around, cleaning up the edges. And you can decide for yourself whether or not the composition is pleasing to you, whether you wanna um, move something more to the center, what have you. For this demonstration, I'm gonna keep it kind of simple so that you can just see what it naturally looks like. I'm gonna let it sit. I can see that there's some of this coral metallic, looks like it's bubbling up. So I'm gonna let it sit for a little while and I will take a photo of it and you can see the final result. All right, while we're waiting for that to um, settle, I'm going to do another 10 by 10 canvas with the same exact colors and the same exact Floetrol water acrylic paint ratio and the same amount in the cups. I, I pre-mix pre these so that I can have them ready. <clears throat> and the reason that I'm doing this is so that we can see without any silicone, what this will look like. So I'm gonna put these in the same order, about half of each color at a time. There we go. I'm gonna pour in all of that coral metallic. And the reason I wanted to do this was so that you could see just with the coral metallic, and with the Floetrol and water, what kind of cell action you might expect. I see a lot of people who are always um, worried about getting cells or they're trying desperately to make cells and it's just not happening for them. And they're looking for a solution. So um, I know part of it has to do with the method that you put the paint on the canvas. A flip cup does a good job of getting the paint moving. So uh, I think it's one of the best ways to get cells if you're looking for cells. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm just gonna put the canvas here, flip it over, and we'll let it have a couple of minutes, maybe not even a couple of minutes, a minute to move around, swish around, mix, put some airflow get in there, and then we'll just pull it straight up, okay? Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. So immediately I see a lot of activity, lots of little air bubbles, and there are there is some cell action. Let me get my torch, and hopefully this time the flame won't be so big. Let's get it torched. Let's pop some air bubbles. Let's see if we can get a little bit of those cells to emerge. And um, yeah, I can see you can see that metallic. Oh, I'm, I'm dripping a little. That metallic coral is starting to pop up. So let's encourage that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and see if I can stretch a little bit. I'm not gonna go over the edge yet. I'm just giving that paint a little push, a little bit of movement so that it can start to have that cell action. All right, there we go. It's, yeah, it's really coming up. Look at, look at how much of that coral is coming up. All right, let me go ahead and, and stretch this out. So we're gonna go over this edge, woo -hoo! We're gonna bring the weight of the paint back to center and we're gonna stretch it this way. All right, here it goes over the edge. I'm gonna try not to lose that coral because I really like that. It's a nice contrast color. So, like I said before, I picked a dark, a light, and two complementary colors. And um, but you don't have to do that every single time, but certainly you want some contrast. Makes a real big difference. If you have colors that are too similar in their value, uh, it can just look washed out. And, uh, and, and in some cases that has its own place too, especially if you're doing a paint pour as a background. Um, but rather it be an intentional choice and not something that you did by accident. So I'm gonna just pull some of these cells. These, these coral cells got huge. There we go, we'll just put that here. And I did not check my level before I started and I happen to know that I'm a tiny bit tilted towards you usually i bring out my level and i check it's too messy right now to check but i can guarantee you we're not level and the paint is going your way a tiny bit so that's something that you can keep in mind the reason i'm not level is that i'm painting on a cart and this cart has wheels and they are on um, a drop cloth and the drop cloth sometimes gets a little bit bunched under the wheels and I get off level. So I had pretty good coverage. I just touched up the very, very corners and I'm gonna go ahead and let this one also uh, percolate, see what kind of cell action I get. Remember, this was with no acrylic, no silicone. So I just wanted to show you some of the drips I have on my silicone mat. I will try to remember tomorrow to film myself peeling these off so you can see how easy they are to manage. But here's the first one that we did. It's been sitting now for a while. It's been sitting a good 45 minutes. And I think most of what's gonna happen has happened. You can see there's a lot of big cells in all the colors. And um, definitely those metallics came up in the center. Like I mentioned, the metallics did not have any silicone in them. 
and they popped up on their own from the chemical reaction. But you can see we have all kinds of cells with the ocean green and the white and the black. It's really pretty. I was a little afraid at first that the white was gonna stay this big blob in the center. I'm really glad that we got all of this movement. And now I will show you the one that was without silicone. Totally different uh, in that you, we just have these big, giant, metallic coral cells. The other colors did not do all the cell action that we had with the silicone. You can see this great lacing, kind of a spider web effect that came, but I think that's mainly just from the technique doing the flip cup. Um, but I told you that the metallics, they will lend themselves to building cells without the use of silicone. So if you're looking for a way to do this without having to use silicone, because there is a certain amount of cleanup that happens with silicone, um, make sure you add a metallic. So there you have it. Let me put them side by side. They actually make kind of a cute pair. I'll probably keep them together as a set, even though they are they came out so different. Um, I really like this color palette. And I couldn't forget to peel off some of those paint skins for you so you can see how easy it comes off the silicone mat. And the skins are so pretty and smooth when you pull them off. You can use them to make different craft projects. Some people use them to make magnets or jewelry. Uh, it's really up to your imagination, but it's really fun to do. So we ended with our two paintings, same colors, little bit different type of cells. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd love it if you subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you can see new videos when they're released every week. We will continue this tutorial series with all sorts of different fluid art techniques. See you next time.